There are also a couple of films by uh, uh, Fred, Fred Warden and uh, um, a guy named uh, Chris Langdon. In the, in the program, it says, uh, I think, Ingo Uves. It's actually, um, for some reason, there's a typo, and it should be U-W-A-I-S. But actually, um, when uh, she made the film, she was uh, Chris Langdon. And actually, I think she prefers that the films are um, credited to Chris Langdon. Um, and I called her more recently um, the first punk filmmaker because there's this kind of uh, really sort of um, sensibility at work in the films, which is kind of um, saying to hell with everything. Um, they're films that are made in a way in reaction to what was uh, what was dominant well at, at California Institute of the Arts in the early 70s, which was an approach to filmmaking based on a very um, careful craftsmanship, which is maybe uh, typified by the work of uh, Pat O'Neill, um, whose uh, films were shown I think, a couple weeks ago. Uh, water and power and horizontal boundaries. Um, so um, Chris and Fred set out to make movies uh, um, really fast and really cheap. Um, this one film that, that's screening uh, now you can do anything is a uh, um, I call it I guess a satirical look at surf culture. But um, the reason they made the film was that um, they figured um, they made it on not on, on camera stock but on print stock because it was uh, cheaper. Um, so the problem with print stock is, of course, it's it's a lot slower than any kind of camera stock. Um, so they had to figure, okay, where can we shoot this film? Where is there a lot of light? So they went to the beach in um, Malibu and uh, they talked to all these uh, girls who would hang out with the surfers. What do you call them? Grammy? Grammys? Um, uh, talking about what you know surfing is like and uh, why they admire these surfing guys. Um, and then in uh, Venusville, it was simply a matter of their. Um, they said it was it was a film that was inspired by a, uh, a bet between them as to um, if you take if you photograph something that is completely still, can someone in the audience tell whether? Um, the image is moving or is it a freeze frame? Um, you know, what's the difference between a moving picture of a still object and um, a non moving picture of a still object, a freeze frame? Um, so you see this, this image of palm trees projected and frozen, and then you hear it on the soundtrack um, talking about it. Um, anyway, I think it's quite wonderful. Uh, um, Fred Wharton went on to have a, a career as a, as a filmmaker and, and uh, like a lot of um, experimental avant-garde filmmakers, um, makes his living as, a, as a, someone teaching filmmaking, like myself. Um, Chris Langdon, on the other hand, um, became totally disillusioned with um, the world of art, the world of filmmaking, and after making um, many, many films over the course of a few years, um, quit. Um, uh, had a sex change operation. Um, became a woman. Ingo Uves, um, and uh, moved to China, um, lived in China for a number of years, learned Chinese, 
um, studied Oriental medicine, um, which she practiced for a few years. Um, and now is involved with um, doing miniature painting and also has a business as a uh, contractor, someone who su supervises the building of houses. Um, and um, her films were, were um, um, uh, totally forgotten, except by me, because I happened to see a show of them in, uh, in uh, it was in 1974 at a small uh, experimental cinema. And they left an impression on me, and um, I showed one of them, uh, I guess in a program I curated for a film forum in Los Angeles in, in 1995. And then uh, when I was doing the, the um, uh, program for the uh, Viennale and the Austrian Film Museum in 2008, um, I was hoping to uh, include some. And um, anyway, I managed to um, um, interest uh, one of the archivists at the Academy, uh, a guy named Mark Toscano, um, who's taken an interest in also in rediscovering films and, and um, sponsoring films that aren't well known. Um, and Mark, using the internet, um, was able to uh, discover her um, through uh, a site by a, a society of, of artists who specialize in miniature painting in Los Angeles, of which she's a member, and got in touch with her and said he was interested in her films. And um, so they started to meet and watch the films again, which she hadn't seen for about 35 years and um, had almost forgotten about. And, um, Anyway, it happened that, that when they started looking at them, she became enthusiastic again and, and um, interested in this work that she had done a long time ago. And Mark started making um, restorations of the films. And um, so now they're being uh, shown again. There was a big show at, at uh, the uh, Cal Arts Theater in downtown Los Angeles a few months ago, which was, um, I don't know, pretty packed, like three, 300 people there. And, and um, the response to the films was um, really enthusiastic. And um, for me, it was a kind of inspiring thing that, um, you know, something that, that appears to be lost or forgotten, but is actually maybe kind of important, um, can, um, with luck and with a certain set of circumstances, um, have it stay again, get rediscovered, and people can appreciate things that, that um, just weren't around. Which is a kind of you know story of, of um, film history, right? Um, that there are these you know great filmmakers who are always recognized as such, um, but then there are all these other filmmakers who, for some reason, um, don't receive the recognition that they deserve at the time they're making the films who get rediscovered later. Um, like Ozu, for example, um, who was always very popular in Japan, but whose films were um, almost entirely unknown outside of Japan, except in Los Angeles and maybe just because there was a large Japanese American community, which supported a lot of, of uh, Japanese theaters, and um, so that I was able to see Ozu films when I was a young person. But um, um, I think people in other cities outside of Japan couldn't. Um, so here's a guy who's totally unknown, and now he's regarded as you know one of the great filmmakers of all time. And of course, it's the same with a number of other Japanese filmmakers like Naruse. Shimizu, who's just being rediscovered now. Um, or here, um, uh, Porto Bello. I see it anywhere? Porto Bello. Yeah. The, you know, the Catalan filmmaker who um, was totally.
totally unknown in the United States until just a 